The ARCA Midwest Tour traveled to La Crosse Fairgrounds Speedway for the Oktoberfest 100. Andrew Morrissey started from the pole and was able to lead the first 11 laps before Dan Fredrickson took over up front. The driver on the move was Johnny Sauter. Sauter passed Fredrickson on a lap 18 restart before finally taking the lead from Fredrickson, bringing along his nephew, Travis Sauter, as well. Another restart with 51 laps remaining saw both Sauters make contact, allowing Johnny to pull away as Fredrickson briefly reclaimed second. The long green flag run allowed Travis to get back in the second and reel in Johnny in the closing laps. Just after the white flag waved, a lap car came into play as both Sauters made contact in turn two, dropping them both from the race. This gave the lead to Nathan Hasli, who was quite a ways back when the incident occurred, but Hasli picked up the lead, completed the distance, and took home the win. It's a huge race. This is uh, the biggest race of the year if you ever grown up or you come to this race for us from the Midwest here. And um, when the two got together, you know, I thought I had a chance. I didn't never know what the car was going to do on a restart. And Danny's real good here and a good racer, but uh, pretty excited. You know, really lucky to win that race. We had a good car, though. You know, we had like a third place car, so um, we'll take it. Right in contention all day, pretty much right there. Just watching those two solder guys going at it right there, but. Really Really, you know, you got to be in position to win, and you never know what's going to happen on that last lap, right? Yeah, we ran in the top five all day, and uh, we were in position, you know. Uh, obviously, them two were the class of the field. But, uh, you know, I just, uh, I'll take it. Like I say, my name's in the record book for uh, winning the Toberfest 100. It's huge. Pretty elite company there. you got Mark Martin, you've got Trickle, you've got Sauters, you've got Fredrickson. I mean, you got a lot of people, uh, Sheer, all kinds of people that have been racing for a lot of years and a lot of historic names, and now you're added to that list. Uh, pretty special moment. They can't take that away. From you, can they? Yeah, no, it's huge. Uh, I think Matt Kenseth won one of them. I mean, there's Richie Bickle, a lot of, a lot of top drivers. So uh, I will take it. It's huge. Fredrickson's fading car was good enough to take second and the 2013 championship. The car was good in the beginning. Um, just um, kind of burned up the tires a little bit there. Trying to hang back and, and be patient and stuff. Um, it's hard, you know. I just want to drive the heck out of it every lap. It's so much fun to drive and. Uh, you know, we were just okay. We weren't great. So, uh, you know, we just want to play it smart and all that stuff. So that's what we did. And you got to take home some heavy-duty hardware, too, winning the championship. It's pretty nice to, to walk out of lacrosse, walking out away with your second Midwest Tour championship. Yep. Um, they give uh, points for the heat race, see? So I knew if I got up high in the heat race last night that I would have the championship locked up. And certainly you can't um, control sometimes what happens in these races. So where a lot of guys would hang back in that heat race, I went like gangbusters last night. I think that might have been a little bit of our problem today. I mean, we had a great car, and the tires went away a little early. Um, of course, we took a lot of life out of them last night in the heat race. So a little bit of that, but, um, you know, we got some improving to do. We're going to work on it. Well, one of the spoils of the championship, too, is you get a chance to uh, turn some laps at Daytona. That's got to be a lot of fun, I bet you're really looking forward to doing some of that. Yeah. Um, I've always wanted to drive around that racetrack, so now I guess I get to go do that. Chris Wimmer was near the front all day and locked down a third-place finish. Yeah, very happy with, with how my weekend went. We blew a motor up with, uh, like, 10 minutes left in practice, and... Uh, to say that we were going to finish in the top five after that, I would tell you a line. But I'm, uh, yeah, very, very happy. Um, it's been a long weekend, and it's way to end it. car was really close all the race. Other than the solders being fast for a good par- part of it, though, you really were right in right in the hunt uh, pretty much all day, though. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, just, you know, one little more adjustment, the thing would have been right on. So uh, maybe uh, we got something to build on, definitely, because it, it, it was a struggle, actually. Uh, we ran this car in the trickle race and uh, didn't have it very good, and we just kind of took a big swing at it today, and it... Uh, end up working so uh now we got something to build on good way to end the season and uh, look forward to next year right absolutely with the uh, with the way the week started uh i'm just i'm just happy that we finished the top five rounding out the top 10 was griffin mcgrath in fourth followed by eric darnell steve holtzhausen tim Sauter, matt kasurik skyler holtzhausen and ross kenseth from lacrosse fairground speedway in west salem wisconsin this is dean reller reporting for speed talk on 1360